MBK 2 10 Krishna per Texas devotee chapter 10 Krishna per Texas devotee at sunrise the following morning Bhishma went to Doryodhana and asked for the arrows hearing that Arjuna had taken them at Krishna's behest Bhishma smiled he was not surprised even if he had kept the arrows Krishna would no doubt have found some way to thwart him while Krishna rode on Arjuna's chariot the Kaurus were doomed how much longer could this fight go on would everyone have to die before it was over donning his armor Bhishma said it seems the Yadava has made my promise false I cannot invest another five arrows with the same power therefore it will not be possible for me to slay the five brothers today however I will still exert myself on your behalf everything that lies within my power will be done I will focus my attention on Arjuna even if I slay him alone your purpose will be accomplished as he prepared for the day's fighting Bhishma thought of Krishna's promise not to take up arms in the battle well today he would test the promise if the Yadu hero made him forsake his vow then he would force Krishna to break his own either he would have to fight or he would see his beloved Arjuna slain Bhishma mounted his chariot and moved off to the head of the army shouting commands he arranged the Kauravas in the formation named Sarvabhadra it resembled an eagle with outspread wings with Kripa, Kritavarma, Jayadratha and other kings he stationed himself at the front and center of the troops other mighty heroes stood at the right and left wings guarding the infantry in their separate divisions Doryodhan stood in the middle surrounded by his brothers and protected by Drona and his son Alambasha and his Rakshasa stood in the rear along with tens of thousands of other soldiers Doryodhan looked at Bhishma at the front of his army amid the Kauravas the old hero shone like the moon the prince felt his hopes rise with Bhishma exhibiting his full power the Pandavas would doubtlessly be thrown into complete disarray still they would try by any means to stop him but there was only one person capable of that at least according to the prophesied Doryodhan turned to Dushashana and called out today the grandfather will slay our enemies in battle like a fire burning grass surely that which we have longed for all these years will now be achieved thus I consider it our highest duty to protect Bhishma but for Shikandi he said he will slay anyone who crosses his path in the battle we should therefore ensure that he does not have to face Drupada's son we should not let Shikandi kill him like a wolf in a pack slaying a lone lion on Doryodhan's order many powerful chariot warriors rode up to surround Bhishma the army then moved off shaking the earth on the other side of the field the Pandava forces stood ready for battle cased in shining mail and arrayed in a counter formation they advanced toward their four Juna riding alongside Drishta Juna said today Bhishma feeling that we deceived him will be angry therefore let Shikandi face him I will protect your brother then the two armies clashed amid war cries and the blare of countless instruments they met furiously above the soldiers hovered shrieking birds of prey jackals howled all the points of the compass appeared as if ablaze and showers of stones fell from the sky the horses and other animals shed tears and stumbled as they ran despite these inauspicious omens which portended a massacre the warriors rushed into battle with full force they drove remorselessly into one another hacking slicing and piercing the chariot warriors showered volleys of shafts that fell like gray clouds from the sky while countless lances sped through the air like silver and gold winged serpents breaking forward from the pond of ranks Abhimanyu displayed astonishing skill and power driven by tawny colored horses he charged against Doryodhan and his division he shot arrows at the prince and all his followers with such force and speed that they were stunned and unable to respond many heroic chariot fighters were slain by his unerring shafts chariots were smashed and elephants were brought down Abhimanyu's arrows flew like virul and serpents spitting fire he scattered the core of other visions like a wind scatters clouds they could hardly look at him as he careered about the field his bow drawn constantly to a circle as Abhimanyu crushed them the core of warriors considered him another Arjuna no one could detect any weakness in him he even confounded Drona, Kripa and Ashvathama who all tried to check him the Kauravas broke and fled in terror seeing his troops distress Doryodhan called for Alambasha and instructed him single-handedly Subhadra's son is destroying my troops 
I do not see any way to stop him other than through yourself, O Prince of Rakshasas. Go at once and slay him. In the meantime, Bhishma, Drona and I will slay Arjuna. Alambasha bowed to the command and uttered a deafening roar that shook the earth. Upon hearing the roar, warriors fell stunned to the ground. Abhimanyu, however, was delighted to see the Rakshasa charge him. Grasping his tall bow, he urged his charioteer to approach him. He appeared to be dancing in his chariot as he released arrows at Alambasha and his followers. The Rakshasas began crushing the divisions supporting Abhimanyu. Alambasha moved with such speed and power that he quickly killed thousands of warriors. His arrows fell like poisonous showers and consumed the Pandava forces. Seeing the Rakshasa's prowess, Draupadi's five sons rushed at him like five planets rushing at the sun. Dayudhishthira's son, Pratavindaya, pierced his armor with a number of keen arrows that screamed through the air. Shining, blood flowing from his wounds, the Rakshasa was as beautiful as a dark cloud fringed with the sun's red rays. The Pandava's sons continued to rain fierce shafts on Alambasha from all sides. Sorely afflicted and wounded, he became infuriated like a snake who had been carelessly kicked. Unable to gather his senses under the attack, he crouched down in his chariot and swooned for a few moments. As the Rakshasa regained consciousness, he rose to his feet and swelled with anger. He shot long arrows decked with buzzard feathers that broke apart his adversary's bows and standards. Every one of the five brothers standing against him was severely wounded. The frenzied Alambasha sent his deadly arrows with frightening force. The shaft slew the four horses drawing each of his opponent's chariots and killed the charioteers. He pierced the brothers again and again with arrows that resembled fiery meteors. With his bow working non-stop, Alambasha rushed against his foes, intent on slaying them, but as he approached them he was checked by a volley of arrows from Abhimanyu. The Rakshasa turned his attention to Subhadra's son, and a ferocious battle ensued between the two heroes. Their eyes red with rage, they gazed at each other for some moments. Both of them roared and clutched their bows as they circled each other on their cars. Suddenly, they both released arrows, their bows twanging like thunderclaps. The Rakshasa employed his illusory powers and Abhimanyu countered with celestial weapons. The sky between the two fighters was filled with clouds of arrows. Fire and smoke issued from them as they struck each other in midair and fell to the earth. Each seeking the weak point in the other, the two warriors pierced one another on the chest, arms and legs. Although hit with powerful shafts that stuck from their bodies like trees on a mountain, neither fighter flinched Abhimanyu then fired arrows that passed clean through the Rakshasa's body and entered the earth like red serpents going into a hole. Alambasha gasped in pain and turned his face away. By his mystic power he spread a cloak of darkness over the battlefield. No one could see anything in the gloom. Then Abhimanyu invoked the Surayastra. As the effulgent weapon appeared, the battlefield was once again illuminated. Abhimanyu then covered his adversary with a network of golden arrows. Finding himself hard-pressed, the Rakshasa employed many kinds of illusion. He made strange beings appear on the field. Blazing weapons of all sorts fell on Abhimanyu from all sides. Unperturbed, Abhimanyu countered the illusions with his celestial missiles. Alambasha, his mystic powers neutralized by Krishna's nephew, was overwhelmed. He leapt down from his chariot and fled. After defeating the Rakshasa, Abhimanyu began crushing the core of troops like an infuriated elephant crushes lotuses in a lake. Only Bhishma could check him. The Karu grandfather was backed by many other powerful chariot fighters. Similarly, many Pandava warriors supported Abhimanyu and a general fight ensued. Elsewhere on the battlefield, Doryodhan, Drona, Kripa, Sasharma, and the Trigurta army encountered Arjuna. Both sides invoked their celestial weapons as they assailed one another to their full power. As they contended together Drona and Arjuna appeared like Shiva and Yamaraja. Forgetful of their relationship, they fought remorselessly. Challenging Arjuna repeatedly, the Trigurtas poured their arrows upon him from all sides. Although assailed by a thick shower of shafts, Arjuna exhibited his lightness of hand by countering them. Even the Celestials cheered Arjuna's skill. Infuriated at being attacked by so many warriors at once, Arjuna invoked the Vayuastra. That irresistible weapon created a tempest that hurled warriors, chariots and elephants all around the field. Seeing the destruction that weapon wrought, Drona countered it with the Sela missile. 
the wind subsided and men and horses fell from the sky Arjuna, moving with blinding speed, fired innumerable arrows that sent the trigger to division reeling. The chariot fighters ranging against Arjuna fell screaming from their shattered cars. Quickly, he was surrounded by Duryodhan, Kripa, Ashvathama, Shalaya, Malika, and a number of other Kaurava Maharathas Magadatta and Srutayash, heading an elephant division, surrounded Bhima, who was supporting his younger brother. While numerous fighters held the two Pandavas at bay, Bhishma approached Yudhishthira. The Karu chief knew that if he could capture Yudhishthira, the war would be over. He surrounded him with thousands of chariots and horsemen. The eldest Pandava, supported by Drishtaduna, Satyaki, Shikandi and other heroes, fought off his attack. Seeing himself surrounded by many elephants, Bhima licked the corners of his mouth and smiled. He grasped his mace and leapt from his chariot with a roar. The elephant warriors closed in on him, goading their rocking beasts with their hooks. In the midst of the elephant division Bhima resembled the sun amid dark clouds. Then like a tempest scattering clouds, he moved swiftly among his opponents. Struck by Bhima's flailing mace, the elephants shrieked. The elephants scored Bhima as he fought. The blood running from his wounds made him appear like a blossoming Ushaka tree. Catching hold of the elephants' tusks he wrenched them out and felled the screaming beasts with blows from his mace. Although the elephants were highly trained in crushing and killing, Bhima was able to slaughter their entire division. The survivors ran frantically back through their own ranks, trampling soldiers and chariots as they fled. In the meantime, Arjuna had repelled the warriors who surrounded him. The Kauravas had fled. Both Bhima and Arjuna then came to support Yudhishthira, who was still under Bhishma's attack. In his fury, Bhishma had alone crushed a huge detachment of Somakus. Although the Somakus were fierce fighters, they could not face Bhishma. Virata, Drupada and Drupada's two sons came before Bhishma and challenged him. They pierced him with arrows decked with gems. Shikandi came forward and shouted out his challenge, firing a hundred shafts, but Bhishma did not respond. Turning from Shikandi he attacked Drupada and Virata Drishtaduna brought his chariot to the fore and shot three arrows that penetrated Bhishma's armor and pierced his chest. Bathed and bloody shone all the more on the battlefield. Without flinching, he struck Drishtaduna with twenty-five arrows, then fired an arrow which cut Drupada's bow. At that time, Bhima and Arjuna arrived and the battle raged on between the two sides. Both armies were fearless. Embracing a hero's death, their minds fixed on heaven, they rushed at their foes with uplifted weapons. Many warriors fell to the ground and lay there laughing as they died. Horses dashed about wildly with their warriors hanging lifeless from the saddle. Chariot fighters fell from their cars with their armor smashed and their limbs severed. So many men were slain that it appeared as if a river of blood flowed across the earth, carrying heads, arms, legs and torsos. Heroes were cheered by the sight and cowards became afraid. As the carnage increased, the kings and Kshatriyas censured Duryodhan. All this destruction has arisen through the folly of that prince and his blind father. Why did Dhritarashtra, of crooked mind and intentions, infatuated by greed, harbor feelings of envy toward the sinless Pandavas hearing their cries, Duryodhan scowled. He looked at Bhishma and Drona, calling out, Do not heed these shouts. Fight with determination and slay our enemies before they annihilate us. Oh grandsire, why do you tarry Bhishma turned to Duryodhan and raised his hand in silent assent. He gazed around the field. Some way off he could see Arjuna's standard rising above the battle. He could hear Hanuman crying on the flag Bhishma again thought of Krishna. Soon the Yadava would see his dearest friend in danger. By his cunning he may have saved the Pandavas last night, but now he would need more than that to save Arjuna. Bhishma was filled with joy at the thought. Whatever Krishna decided would doubtlessly be for his good, and the good of the world Bhishma ordered his charioteer to move toward Arjuna. Remembering his promise he slew every soldier he saw Arjuna was fighting with Sasharma and his army when Bhishma arrived. Like the destroyer himself, he was slaughtering their warriors mercilessly. No one could stand before him for even a moment before being struck by his shafts. Faced with the impossible task of fighting Arjuna, many warriors fled in terror. Some left their horses, others their chariots, and some their elephants, to escape on foot in their panic. Others galloped away at full speed, not looking back. Although Sasharma tried to rally his troops, they paid him no heed. 
Soon the king stood in the battle with only his own brother supporting him. Duryodhan saw his plight and came to assist him. With Bhishma, they assailed Arjuna with volleys of shafts. The other Pandavas then rushed to Arjuna's assistance. At the same time, other great fighters among the Kauravas came to Bhishma's side. Soon a mighty battle between the best warriors on both sides ensued saw Tyaki and Kritavarma, disregarding their long friendship, battled together Drona fought Drupada, while Bhima engaged with Balika Duryodhana and Chakuni, along with some of Dhritarashtra's other sons. Fought Yudhishthira and the twins Bhishma slew the Pandava troops with a vengeance. It appeared that even death personified could not approach him. Ten thousand chariot warriors from the races of the Chaitish, Cassius and Karishas, all fearless and unretreating in battle, rushed at Bhishma, but he killed them all. Now the Pandava army began to flee. Seeing this, Krishna said, O poor thought, the hour which you have so ardently longed for has now arrived. Make good the words you spoke at the Ratna's palace. Before the assembled kings you said, I will slay any and all of Duryodhana's fighters, headed by Bhishma and Drona, O grinder of foes, make true your words. Remembering the duties of your order, do not hesitate. Fight and slay Bhishma before he destroys our army. Arjuna stood in his chariot, his head hung down. He knew it was indeed time to try to kill his grandfather. Heavy with sadness, he looked at Krishna and replied, Burdensome is the duty of Akshatriya in this world. Killing those who ought not to be slain, he strives for wealth and power. Yet, O oh John Orgna, I must do your bidding. That is my highest duty. Then drive my horses toward that virtuous man of irresistible splendor. Today I will kill Bhishma. Krishna took up the reins and the horses moved according to his will. The Pandava troops, seeing Arjuna rushing for an encounter with Bhishma, rallied Bhishma roared out his war cry and covered Arjuna's chariot with a blanket of arrows. Krishna dexterously drove the chariot out from under the attack and Arjuna fired a bronze-headed shaft that split Bhishma's bow in two. Bhishma immediately strung another. But before he could fit an arrow to it, Arjuna again destroyed it. Bhishma smiled and cheered Arjuna. Well done, well done, O oh mighty armed one, evading Arjuna's arrows, the Karu chief took up another bow, then spun around to fire dozens of shafts at his foe. Again Krishna baffled the attack by his expert chariot driving. None of Bhishma's arrows found their mark, and they whistled past harmlessly. Bhishma increased the intensity of his assault, anticipating Krishna's moves and striking both him and Arjuna with numerous shafts. Krishna and Arjuna, mangled by Bhishma's arrows, appeared beautiful. Like a pair of heifers scratched by each other's horns, Arjuna countered Bhishma's attack, but found himself unable to strike his beloved grandfather with all his might. Bhishma maintained a relentless assault on Arjuna. At the same time he attacked the surrounding Pandava troops. The twang of his bow made one continuous roaring sound. His shaft streaked in all directions. Passing through the bodies of warriors, horses and elephants and killing them, the fearful shafts then entered the earth. Bhishma concentrated his attack on Arjuna's chariot. He struck Krishna with a number of shafts and the Yadava trembled in his seat as he guided the horses. Laughing loudly, Bhishma rained thousands of arrows on Arjuna. Still the Pandava resisted him only half-heartedly. Krishna looked astonished to see Bhishma's prowess. It seemed like the Karu warrior would consume the three worlds. Bhishma stood in battle like the destroyer on the day of universal dissolution. Seeing him killing the foremost Pandava warriors, and that Arjuna was not fighting to his full power, Krishna became thoughtful Bhishma could kill the combined armies of the gods and Usuras if left unchecked. Unless Arjuna did something, then even he would succumb to Bhishma's deadly shafts. Already he was sorely afflicted Krishna reflected, I will personally slay Bhishma. I cannot tolerate the slaughter of the Pandavas Arjuna is not doing what he should do out of his respect for Bhishma. Therefore I will lighten the Pandavas load by killing that best of men in battle, even as Krishna thought in this way, Bhishma stepped up his attack. By employing celestial weapons, he fired so many arrows that all points of the compass around Arjuna were covered. Neither the sky, the earth, nor the sun could be seen yet Hishthira's troops were crushed and forced back by the irresistible wall of arrows. Jumping down from their cars, they fled in terror Arjuna's chariot was entirely shrouded. Neither he nor Krishna were visible. Only his tall standard could be seen. Seeing him hard-pressed, Drishtad Yuna blew his conch and came to his aid. Krishna whirled Arjuna's chariot around and managed to evade Bhishma's attack. Seeing Drishtad Yuna coming up, 
he called out, O hero of the Sinus, our men are retreating. The grandfather is slaying them like a lion killing deer. Behold, I will myself kill that hero of fixed vows along with all his followers and the sons of Dhritarashtra. O Satvita chief, no one can escape me when I am angry. With great joy I will secure the kingdom for you Jada Shatru. Krishna threw down the reins and leapt from the chariot. Taking up a nearby chariot wheel, he raised it above his head as if it were his own favorite weapon, the Sudarshana Chakra. He ran toward Bhishma as a lion might run at an elephant. The end of his yellow silk garment fluttered in the dusty air, resembling lightning dancing in a dark cloud. The wheel in his hand seemed to glow with his own effulgence, and it looked as beautiful as the primeval lotus from which Brahma was born. Krishna's dark arm appeared like the stalk of the lotus, and his charming face, covered with beads of perspiration, was its filament. Seeing Krishna intent on Bhishma's destruction, the Kaurus felt their end was near. Krishna looked like the all-destroying Samvartaka cloud, which appears at the end of the millennium. Bhishma's limbs trembled and his eyes fluttered with tears. Here was the Lord of the Universe, breaking his own promise to protect his devotee. The Karu hero threw down his weapons and stretched out his arms. As Krishna approached him he called out, Come, come, my lord. O supreme deity, lord of all the gods, I bow to you. Seeing you forsake your vow to save your friend, and thus fulfilling my own desire, I am satisfied. Fell me from this chariot, O Keshava. Killed by you, O John Ordna, I will obtain great good fortune. My fame and dignity will be celebrated throughout the worlds. Arjuna was mortified to see Krishna breaking his promise not to fight. It was his fault. If he had exerted himself against Bhishma, this would not have been necessary. Of course, Krishna's promise had been that he would not wield weapons in the war, and a wheel was hardly a weapon, but still, he would be condemned by foolish men for his apparent dishonesty. Arjuna put down his bow and jumped from the chariot. His armor flashing in the late afternoon sun, he ran after Krishna. Krishna had covered almost half the distance to Bhishma. As he ran with the upraised wheel, his upper garment fell from his body into the mud. Gazing at Bhishma with eyes red with anger, he shouted, You are the root of this great slaughter. A wise minister who treads the path of virtue should restrain a wicked king by any means. If that is not possible, then such a wretched monarch should be abandoned, Arjuna succeeding in reaching Krishna. Hurling himself forward, he caught hold of Krishna's legs. But even with Arjuna hanging onto his thighs, Krishna continued to run at Bhishma. Bhishma bowed his head and replied to Krishna as he came near. You forever speak the truth, my lord. I told Dhritarashtra to abandon Duryodhan, even as the Bajas abandoned Kangsa, but he did not listen. Surely destiny is all-powerful, dragged by Krishna, Arjuna dug his feet into the ground. After taking ten steps with the Pandava gripping him tightly, Krishna was at last brought to a stop. Arjuna released his legs and fell at his feet. Quell your anger, O Keshava. You are the Pandava's refuge, without doubt, but please do not violate your promise. These were your words, O Lord, I will not take up arms, do not falsify your vow. I swear by my sons and brothers that I will make good my promise. You will see me fight as never before. O Krishna, at your command, I shall surely annihilate the Kaurus, headed by Bhishma. Hearing Arjuna's promise, Krishna was pacified. He lowered the chariot wheel. As Bhishma looked on in wonder, both Krishna and Arjuna turned and walked back to their chariot. Even as they were returning, the sun set and the day's hostilities ended. Conches were blown on both sides and the two armies withdrew. The battle-weary warriors made their way to their camps, speaking of the wonderful incident between Krishna and Bhishma. The Karu chief himself thought only of Krishna as he led his forces away for the night. The image of the Adava hero running toward him with the upraised wheel would stay forever in his heart.